Warning, men don't get married. We discuss this topic in length. Hello and welcome to the Facts Channel. Our channel explores psychology, relationships, marriages, men, women, husbands, wives, sexuality and more. Please subscribe and comment and we will certainly respond. Enjoy the video. Did the intimacy, passion and sex decrease substantially or come to complete stop? Are you even with the right person? Losing interest in sex over time can be just a sign that you are with the wrong person. After all, if you're in a relationship, chances are that you are with the wrong person. Women regularly start relationships equally as excited for sex as men. In a world that cherishes the comforting embrace of monogamy, where cultural norms gently nod in its favour, the desire for exclusivity among women is more than just a cosy arrangement. It's a magnetic force that sparks passion in the intricate dance of long-term commitment. Moving in with your boyfriend. Can kill your sex drive was how Newsweek distilled a 2017 study of more than 11,500 British adults aged 16 to 74. It found that for women only, lack of interest in sex was higher among those in a relationship of over one year in duration and that women living with a partner were more likely to lack interest in sex than those in other relationship categories. Those in the same relationship over the study period reported less desire, arousal and satisfaction. Women in long-term committed heterosexual partnerships might think they've gone off sex, but it's more that they've gone off the same sex with the same person over and over. Basically, it seems they have become bored having sex with the same partner or the same old sexual experience. This is not saying they do not love their partner. It is the thrill, passion and excitement she seems to need is gone in her mind for some reason. Many women who feel stultified by long-term exclusivity, in spite of having been taught that they were designed for it and are naturally inclined toward it. What are we to make of the possibility that women far from anxious guardians of monogamy, might on the whole be more like monogamy's victims. The penny jar test. Are you familiar with the penny jar test? The theory goes that if a married couple were to put a penny into a jar every time they had sex in the first year of their marriage and then take a penny out of the jar every time they had sex after their first year, the jar would never be emptied. Sad, right? But probably not far from the truth. Ultimately, this can be the result of much more than just boredom. Is the woman trying to impress her man or influence his relationship decisions and feelings about her and their premarital relationship and early marital relationship based on sex? That is certainly possibly true. Prior to marriage, some couples have unbelievable intimacy, passion and sexual experiences together. While it is true that some couples may experience changes in their sexual frequency or intensity after marriage, it is not a universal occurrence. While every relationship is unique, it's common for sexual activity to decrease or change once partners become married. This can happen due to various reasons such as shifting priorities, increased emotional connection and physical intimacy becoming less necessary. Some couples may even choose to abstain from sex altogether. Several factors can contribute to a decrease in sexual activity within a marriage or long-term relationship, such as the following five examples. Number one, relationship dynamics. The dynamics within a relationship can shift after marriage. Couples may begin to prioritize other aspects of their lives, such as careers or raising a family. These changes can affect the time and energy available for sexual intimacy. Number two, emotional connection. For some individuals, the emotional connection and sense of security that comes with marriage can actually enhance their sexual experiences. However, for others, the emotional bond may lead to a decreased focus on physical intimacy as emotional needs are met in other ways. Number three, Stress and fatigue. Daily life stresses, such as work responsibilities, financial pressures, or familial obligations, can impact sexual desire and energy levels. Fatigue, in particular, can be a significant barrier to engaging in sexual activity regularly. Number four, 
health conditions and hormonal changes. Physical health conditions, hormonal imbalances or medications can contribute to changes in libido and sexual function. These factors can affect both men and women and may require medical intervention or lifestyle adjustments. Number five, communication and relationship satisfaction. Open and honest communication about sexual desires, needs and expectations is crucial within any relationship, including marriage. Difficulty communicating about sex or unresolved issues in the relationship can contribute to a decline in sexual activity. It's essential to approach this situation with empathy and understanding, recognizing that every individual and relationship is unique. It is not appropriate or accurate to assume that there is something inherently wrong with your partner based on changes in sexual dynamics. If concerns about sexual intimacy in a marriage or long-term relationship persist, seeking the guidance of a therapist or counsellor who specialises in couples or sex therapy may be beneficial. Newlywed couples report a moderate to high level of sexual desire on average, with men reporting higher levels of desire than women. However, women's sexual desire declined more steeply while men's sexual desire did not show a decline on average. Having children accentuated this difference, such that new mothers reported a greater decrease in sexual interest, while men's desire again remained constant on average with no change. We all know women are more emotional as a whole, and many things can influence her life decisions. Women can move through different emotional time zones during the course of their marriage or long-term relationships. The following sections will discuss those emotional time zones. Zone 1. Women dwelling in Zone 1 sense an elusive void in their lives, despite having achieved the dreams of a cosy home, a loving family and an incredible husband. Yearning for a heightened sense of joy, these spirited individuals find themselves on a journey where contentment remains just out of grasp. Over time, many women in this zone begin to lose interest in sex. These dynamic women unleash a torrent of creativity in steering clear of physical intimacy with their husbands, crafting elaborate strategies to dodge the tantalizing allure of a potential sexual encounter. Mysterious physical bedtime ailments become their preferred melody, a strategic diversion from the amorous battlefield. They spend a great deal of energy trying to avoid physical contact with their husbands because they fear it might lead to a sexual encounter. For them, the act of passion transforms into a chore, akin to mundane tasks like tackling the dishes or braving the grocery store aisle. Many women passionately express a sense of violation coursing through them when touched by their husbands. Some even experience their bodies instinctively locking up, accompanied by a palpable tension gripping their chests or a queasy sensation churning in their stomachs. Women navigating zone, one find themselves ensnared in a gripping narrative, haunted by the notion that a flaw resides within them. They worry that their husbands may seek solace elsewhere or, in their darkest nightmares, abandon the love they've built together. Zone 2. In Zone 2, women find themselves propelled into an exhilarating journey of rediscovered desire, ignited by a chance encounter beyond the bounds of marital commitment. Whether these encounters with a new man involve sex or remain platonic, women will typically give a tremendous amount of emotional significance to these encounters. Many women in Zone 2 have not felt any sexual desire for a long time. They may feel tremendous guilt and regret, regardless of whether their new relationships are sexual, merely emotional, or both. They find themselves on the cusp of what can only be described as an electrifying identity crisis, even trying to forget the chance encounter. But there are constant reminders of their emotions and feelings everywhere. When the subject of infidelity surfaces, whether in the media, amidst family and friends, or within the confines of their homes, a profound sense of guilt washes over these women. Women in Zone 2 can no longer express their prior disdain for infidelity without feeling like a hypocrite. This self-discovery has them realizing they've left behind a fragment of their former selves in the process. 
women find themselves questioning their coveted good girl status, wrestling with a sense of unworthiness in their marriages. Fueled by an internal struggle, many embark on a transformative journey to reconcile these emotions by intensifying their focus on and appreciation for their husbands. As time unfolds, a captivating shift takes place, with numerous women transitioning from mere appreciation to the intricate art of justification. They seek to validate their persistent yearning for other men. Skillfully attributing these desires to unmet needs within their marriage, or even possibly their husband's past behaviour. The stage is set as many women will become negative and sarcastic when speaking of their husbands and their marriages, and it is not uncommon for an extramarital affair to follow. Zone 3. Women are navigating the intricate landscapes of relationships, some entangled in affairs, others gracefully concluding them, and a few contemplating the transformative journey of divorce. Those embroiled in clandestine connections, an intoxicating wave of emotions sweeps over them, evoking sensations that redefine the very essence of feeling alive. These women are experiencing feelings associated with a chemically altered state, or what is typically referred to as being in love. Many of these women are also typically in tremendous emotional and psychological pain stress. They grapple with the searing agony of deciding between the familiarity of their husbands and the allure of new love interests. Having a conflicting sense of wrongdoing, they find themselves ensnared in the paradox of believing their actions to be unfair, yet unable to sever the ties of their secret liaisons. Before each clandestine encounter, they are determined that this will be the last time. Their resolve wavers in the face of irresistible emotions and are unable to stick with their decisions. Unable to end their extramarital relationships, women at Zone 3 conclude that their lovers are soulmates and are oblivious to the chemical allure of emotions during the initial stages of a relationship. Many find themselves suspended in a prolonged state of limbo, wrestling with the enduring question that echoes relentlessly in their minds. Should I remain entwined in my marriage, or is it time to embrace the uncertainty of divorce? Their hearts often prompts women at this zone to embark on the poignant journey of attempted separation. Now the Zone 3 Dynamics finds husbands embarking on well-intentioned, albeit futile, quests to bring joy to their wives. With noble aspirations, they amplify their attentiveness, dedicate more moments to domesticity, and earnestly strive to mend the perceived fractures in their relationships. Regardless of the husband's attempts and their wife's past and present complaints, the last thing women at this point want is to spend more time with their husbands. These women master the art of persuasion with a convincing allure. They express the goals of imminently a potential reconciliation, skillfully suggesting that solitude holds the key to salvaging their faltering marriages. The reason many women will give for their desire to separate is a search for self. Behind the veil of marital salvage lies a yearning to liberate themselves from the constraints of matrimony as they hunger for moments unshackled from the routines of wedlock, craving the intoxicating company of their clandestine lovers. Separation allows women at this point to enjoy the high they experience with their lovers without giving up the security of their marriages. Husbands of Zone 3 women are often unaware that their wives are having affairs. Their lack of suspicion is typically due to their wife's disinterest in sex and in their belief that their wife is a good girl. It is also equally plausible that many women in Zone 3 will be having to navigate the poignant conclusion of clandestine affairs, a narrative where the closure might not have originated from their own volition. Their lover could have either lost interest because the relationship could not progress or who became attracted to another woman who was single. Women whose affairs are ending often experience extreme grief. Unaware that they are experiencing the chemical withdrawal of their invigorating affair, then can express tremendous anger toward their husbands because feelings of having missed their chance at happiness due to their indecisiveness. With their newfound search for self, 
women may now embark on a compelling quest, convinced that the chapters of their past affairs have bestowed upon them a heightened awareness of their desires and needs in a partner. With the lurid affair now over, some women will continue to look for a new partner during their continued separation. After all, a new relationship with a new partner will also represent a clean slate, a chance for these women to regain their good girl status. Some will return to their marriages and reintroduce sporadic intimacy with their husbands even though they are not sexually attracted, a calculated move to safeguard their marriage until they make a decision. Zone 4. Women in Zone 4 include those who chose to stay married and continue their affairs and those who chose to divorce. A captivating revelation emerges as some choose to persist in their extramarital affairs, asserting that the marital intimacy is inexplicably enhanced by the maintaining of a relationship outside the confines of matrimony. There exists a subset of women who perceive their lovers as soulmates, yet the tether to their husbands remains unbroken. Intertwining the realms of marital and extramarital connections is a delicate balance, but many do not feel torn between the two. Many women will seek having affairs with married men because they believe the affairs could continue indefinitely without disrupting either partner's primary relationship. The duration the affairs can last is a guessing game, and so much can change trying to maintain possible secrecy involved. For women that finally choose divorce, a new relationship will typically have them feel relief due to finally making that decision. But many of these divorced will also have feelings of guilt and regret for having hurt their children and ex-spouses because they find themselves experiencing similar feelings in the new relationship as it progressed. The saying, the grass is always greener on the other side, suggests that people often perceive others' situations or circumstances as better than their own. It implies that we tend to envy what we don't have, assuming it must be more desirable. However, reality may not always align with this perception. Sometimes, the grass on our side of the fence is just as green, if not greener, than what we imagine elsewhere. Unfortunately, up until very recently, men were regularly divorced by their wives without ever knowing about their wives' affairs and infidelities. Whether or not you get married is entirely up to you, and we hope you have marital bliss and never have to go through the reduction in sexuality or intimacy that is quite frequently involved in relationships. Instead of assuming negative intentions, it's more productive to have an open and honest conversation with your partner about your feelings and concerns. Try to approach the conversation with empathy and the willingness to understand each other's perspectives. By creating a safe and non-judgmental space for communication, you can better understand each other's needs and work together to find a mutually satisfying sexual dynamic within your marriage. Seeking the guidance of a couples therapist or sex therapist may also be beneficial in helping navigate these conversations and addressing any underlying issues that may be impacting your sexual relationship and possibly save your marriage. Good luck. If you really do find this video informative, please subscribe, comment and share. We need you to subscribe so we can continue to provide more videos and shorts. Thank you from the Facts Channel.